like to always start with a little bit of a joke, and I want to say thank you to Christina Cryan for helping me with this one. Um, if you remember last week, Dave Marker came up here and said, hey, Dr. Raviel is going to be on a Blaze Radio this week. Send in your questions. She's going to record them, and it's going to be on a Blaze Radio. So fast forward a couple of days, I see Christina Cryan in the hall at just uh, St. John Bosco the other day, and I say, oh, guess what? Hey, I'm going to be giving the talk at a Blaze on Sunday. She says, oh, I thought it was Dr. Aviel. And then there was like a really long pause, and it was like, but I'm sure you'll be fine. <laughs> so for all you Dr. Aviel fans, I apologize, but she'll be on the radio, so there you go. All right. Uh, I came into the church last year, last April. It was a long road into the church. Uh, it's all highlighted by a day that we affectionately call Tree Day in our house, October 1st, 2012. They were God kicked me in the butt and basically told me, let's go. And he dropped a tree. I don't want to say he dropped a tree on our house, but a tree fell on our house. And it was a wake-up call. It was a blessing of unbelievable magnitude for our family. But let's start at the beginning. Uh, I grew up Methodist, not really deep in my faith at all. At times I was, but all the time pride was the blocker for me. Pride is my big my big hang-up. I did everything myself. I was smart at school. I could get good grades. I'm good at my jobs. I, you know, God's there, but you know, I was doing everything, okay? Pride always got in the way of my faith, and it, for a very long time. I married Erin, who at the time, you know, she grew up Catholic, but she wasn't necessarily extremely deep in her faith. Once getting married, she got a lot deeper in her faith, and really, she became one of those those wacky Catholics, you know, which I'm proud to say I am now. But at the time, she was a wacky Catholic. I was not. Um, we could ignore it for a while. You know, Aaron and I got along very well for a long time. But around eight to nine years in, it finally came to a head with us where the difference in our faith was really going to, you know, cause issues in our marriage. So from eight to ten, it, it really it wasn't pretty at times. I mean, I'll be honest, we, you know, we, we butt, butted heads a lot. But uh, it was pride on my part that was doing that. Again, you know, I didn't want to give in to the faith. I didn't want to be wrong, you know, because I, I know this and, and you think that and I'm not going to be wrong. So again, it was pride that got in the way. But over time, my heart was slowly being worked on, slowly being picked at. Having those three beautiful kids that we had, Carter, Ava, and Lily, there were moments where they just knock your socks off. Like Ava would wake up in the morning and she'd have these dreams. She'd tell us these vivid dreams of, I was sitting on Jesus's lap and there were, you know, there were angels and saints and we were talking and this and that. And Aaron looked at me and said, you, you still stuck on your pride thing? <laughs> and, you know, and Aaron had issues where, or times where she had, you know, she would pray, God, show me something. She'd be at mass and there'd be frustration, show me something. And, you know, uh, the, one of the, um, Deacons would walk by with the Eucharist, you know, be walking by, and Ava would, I think she was two or three at the time, and she'd say, hey, look, there goes Jesus. And Aaron said, what? You know, but again, those little moments that just kind of, kind of picked at me, little by little. Uh, as you all know, I'm also the Dave Ramsey guy here at the church, and following him, he was one of the first people that I really admired that really wore his Christianity on his sleeve. You know, he, I mean, everything, he always says, everything he does is for God. Everything he does is for Jesus. We are here as his tools. Um, he's an evangelical Christian. He's not Catholic. That being said, that's when I started seeing, you know what, maybe there is a, a potential where I could still have my, you know, I can do something, but I could do it with God and still, you know, maintain. And so my heart was slowly being worked on. Finally, this picture right here, I'm not going to tell you the entire story. But this is our 10th anniversary. We were in Destin. This is the beginning of our healing right here. We had a little bit of an argument. I, I had an argument. She had a plan. And she... <laughs> well, I thought we were having an argument. She it, basically, she, she had a surprise waiting for me. And I didn't think so. And I was fighting with her about it. Nevertheless, at that moment, I realized it's my fault. You know, we were butting heads. I'm this, I'm that. You're the, and it was at this moment that I realized it's my fault. I can do better. It's not, it's not I, you can do better because I need you to, 
I can do better. So this was the, the starting point for us. So I started slowly building in my faith. I listened to some CDs. One in particular, it was a Matthew Kelly CD. And it really hit me about, and it wasn't really, wasn't really deep on faith. It was about being deliberate in everything that we do. Being deliberate in everything that we do with our kids, with our marriages, at our work, deliberate every day. You know, there's no second where there shouldn't be, you know, some kind of, why are we doing this? And it really hit me. So I was growing in my faith. On October 1st, 2012, God said, I appreciate you walking, walking in your faith. Let's pick up the pace a little bit. So this is October, October 1st, 2012. Normally, this is a Monday night. Normally Mondays, I'm off. I take my son to Cub Scouts, and my wife is home with the kids in the living room watching a movie. This day, it was obviously stormy, which is why we had a tree in our living room. Um, so I was at work, and Aaron, thank God, had the kids up here at the church. So we'll go to the next one. You can see the trees on the couch there where they, where they normally are watching a movie, but they were at church. And actually, they were praying in front of Mary, believe it or not, when this happened. I believe it. Um, and the dogs were in the other room, cat was upstairs. Everything was fine. We had a nice little sunroof now in our house, so it was really cool. But it's really amazing because it missed the fireplace, it missed the outer wall, it just went right through. There were no wires, there were no gas lines, there was nothing. It was just, this is, this is my personal favorite picture because you can see the tree outside and the tree inside. So, <laughs> it, I was very artistic, I was really proud of myself. <laughs> so for a month we were out of the house. That month was the best month of my life because our family came together. We lived with, some, or we lived with our neighbors for a week, and then we lived with our in-laws for about three weeks. And as we put the home back together and had to deal with the insurance stuff and, and the arguing, arguing with them about that, but it brought our family closer together. And at the end of October, when we got back in the house, we were home. And I really felt like for the first time, we came home. And that was really the catalyst that really drove my faith from there. So, where am I? All right, so through, so through my growing process, as we get, you know, our marriage continued to heal and I continued to go deeper in my faith, I always knew I'd be Catholic. I wanted to receive the call. You know, I wanted to get that, that call from God. Uh, but as our marriage was healing, issues with work started building up. And I knew that at one point, or at some point, I was going to have to leave the station because... The priorities that they wanted from me were not the priorities that my family needed from me, and I had to make a choice. And I, I knew at some point, and it was going to be in the end of June of uh, 2014, that was going to be when we decided it was time to go. But it's scary, because that's all I'd ever done since leaving school, was be a weather guy. I didn't know what I was going to do out in the real world, I didn't know where I was going to go. And around April of 2014, as we approached Easter, I remember Good Friday, I mean, I'm just, I'm worried about it. And I remember Good Friday was rainy and cloudy and dreary and it was awful. And I was just, you know, wrapped up in all the emotions and the worries. Saturday leading up to Easter, it was just clouds and, and dreary and cold and rainy. And I just, you know, again, the worry of what am I going to do? Easter Sunday, literally all the clouds broke in the morning in time for the sunrise. And I was at work and the sun came up. And it was the most amazing sunrise. And that was the moment. And I just felt it in my heart that God said, let go. He said, you're a planner. That's my problem with my pride. I'm a planner. God said, stop. Give it up. Follow me. You're going to jump. And I'm not going to tell you where you're going to go. But you're going to jump. And I'm going to take care of you. And that was the moment where I decided I'm doing it. I'm coming into the church. I'm letting go of my job. Let the chips fall where they may as far as jobs go, as far as all that goes, but I'm putting priorities in place, and I'm, I'm jumping with God. So when I went to Mass, and Father Michael did Mass, I'll never forget it. It was just one of those Masses where I realized I wanted to get, I really wanted to get the Eucharist at that point. I really wanted to, to receive the sacraments. I really wanted to be a part of the church. That's when it really hit me. And so it was Easter of 2014, and this is actually a picture of our family after Mass, and this was the beginning of my march towards Catholicism with my family. And it, it was an amazing march. I left my job in July. There were a couple of months where I was out of work. But very funny that um, I worked for a wonderful boss 
who also happens to be in the building, so I'm going I'm to give him some love. That way, you know, I get some brownie points. But uh, Tom Melcher, he pulls me in on, on September 30th and says, I want you to work with me full time. So I started my full time gig at Talay's, where I am now, on October 1st, the same day that the tree hit. So tree day, two years later, I have the new job. And we're able to do everything with our, with our family that we've been wanting to do. So I came to the church in Easter 2015. It was everything that I wanted it to be. And the fact that you know, I wasn't at the job anymore with the station, I was able to go through all the classes. I was able to work with a blaze here. I was able to do the financial piece, be a coach for my son's basketball team. I, I got to do everything that I wanted to do, everything that I was called to do as a father and called to do as a husband. I got to do all of that because I followed God's lead. God told me to jump, trust in me, and I did. And I, I really, I try not to plan the super, super long term, outside of what you can control with putting towards retirement and, and you know, college and things like that. But as far as the minute details, God takes care of it. And so came into the church, been growing in my faith ever since. And then, actually, this is a picture of me and the family. This is the day after uh, came into the church. So this is that Sunday because as you know, the vigil goes forever and ever on Saturday night. And then yesterday, which was October 1st, our miracle baby was baptized, Claire. Now that's a longer story for why we call her our miracle baby. Let's just say uh, I made a decision that we were going to be done with kids. And God said, no, you don't. And you're going to go have another decision to be not done with kids. And there she is. Again, longer story for another day. And, you know, it's also, it's also very fitting. It's really weird that, or not weird, it's providential, I should say, that Father Jack would come to me and say, hey, did you want to talk this weekend? Being that it's, you know, October 1st weekend. And Mother Teresa's relics are here this weekend. And Mother Teresa was very big on my, um, on my conversion into the faith. We used to watch the videos in the narthex, the, um, the family holy hour videos and it would have John Paul II at the end talking and it would have Mother Teresa talking. And Mother Teresa was always smiling. She was always happy. I mean, she was working in, I mean, in, in the, the slums and, the, and the, the, lo the lowest neighborhoods in Calcutta. And she was just, I mean, dealing with people who were dying and she was always happy. Or at least she, you know, she always was smiling. I know that there were moments, as, as you read her story about, you know, that she felt lost and she was alone. But she really was very intentional about carrying her cross, you know, and carrying it well. And that was a very, it always stuck in my mind that, you know, I think everybody in the world wants to be happy. You know, I think that's, you know, I want, I want to do something that makes me happy. It's, she was happy. Like, every time you saw her. And, and that always kind of worked in my head, you know, she was always there. So she was a very big part of my conversion. So it's very, again, providential. All right, so I had six minutes left. That's a little bit less than I wanted, but here we go. I'm Catholic. So what's next? You know, friends always laugh at me since I'm a convert because the converts to the faith are always the crazy ones, you know. <laughs> but, the, the, you know, the reality is, I mean, we've been through so much. You know, my wife and I have seen so much. We've prayed about things and big giant like tractor trailer sized gifts fall out of the sky from God. And it's just, it's amazing. I, and for that reason, I mean, I've seen too much and we've seen too much to just be lukewarm in our faith and lukewarm Catholics. We've seen too much. We've got the fire for desire, which Father Jack talked about last week. So what do we do at our house to kind of build on that, on that fire that we have? We got rid of our TV or the, the cable, I should say, or the dish. There's just too much junk going across and coming into the house. We still watch a little Netflix every once in a while because you got to watch a movie every once in a while. But the reality of the situation is because of that, my wife and I at night, instead of turning on the TV and sitting there for two hours and watching TV, we play card games or we talk about what, is, you know, what are the kids doing with this or what do we need to do with that. Um, and watch a movie every once in a while, but we're much more intentional about that time. It's time for her and I to talk and kind of, you know, work on things. But the TV is rarely on in our house. Uh, the other one is dinner together and weekends together. When I was working part-time, I, I really realized how valuable it was. I was home every night for dinner. I was home every weekend with the family. That's so valuable. 
there's no price on that. And I just knew that when I ended up getting the job that I have, you know, I was looking for something where I could be home for dinner every night. And I'm home for dinner every night. It's just, it's one of those things that we've gotten away from, you know, as a culture and as, as a country, dinner together, you know, every single night. And it just, it means so much. We do prayer time uh, every morning, my wife and I, depending on what the baby says. Um, sometimes I go down and then she goes down later and then, but we make it happen. Uh, we aim for frequent confession at least once a month, which ends up being once every two months, but we're working on it. Uh, we also, we have with, with a bad spelling there, adoration. That's my fault. Uh, we do Friday night adoration. We do our prayers together as a family every single night. We pray for, for meals and we do Sunday night rosary where everybody leads a decade of the rosary. So we try, we try and are intentional about doing those things throughout the day. The other one, and the big one is, and I'll bring in the Dave Ramsey stuff, is the debt-free. And whether you're going to be debt-free or you're trying, always be aware of what at, when you're at your job and you're making your money, what is your money going towards? You know, I drive a 16-year-old SUV because I don't want a car payment on it. And yeah, that, sometimes I gotta push that thing up the hill, but you know, it's okay. Um, but I want to free ourselves up, you know, my wife is home now. I want to free ourselves up to have that life where it's a little more, it's more family centered, it's not stuff centered, you know. That's, that building up the family is what brings us closer to God. So the debt free thing is very big in our family. So let's talk about some tips. What can we do? Three minutes. I'm, I'm doing all right. I'm going to get out of here on time. So what do you do? Be intentional. How you act determines how you feel. It's not the other way around. And that is so important. You hear so many stories of people saying that something happened to them and now, they, now they're, they're having a terrible day, this and that. You have to flip it around. How you act determines how you feel. Okay? Center yourself in prayer. Center yourself in your faith. Center yourself in what is, what is God calling me to do today? and everything will flow from that. We're gonna have speed bumps, but they can't derail us from our main goal. The other thing is with the intentionality is let your kids know not only that you're doing something, but the why, okay? It, kids, kids can see through it, okay? You can't teach them this is what you're supposed to do and, and turn around and do something else. Kids, you need to be intentional and tell them why it is that you're doing things. The other one, and this is, this is a Mother Teresa thing right here, simplicity. This is not necessarily simplicity in what you do, but simplicity in the ideas of why you're doing it. And, and when I was contemplating on this and I was praying on this this morning, um, Deacon Ed came to mind. I miss him like crazy. But Deacon Ed came to mind because he was very simplistic in his goal. Man, worked. That man worked like crazy. There was nothing simplistic about what he did from a day-to-day -day standpoint, but his goals were simplistic. What does God want me to do? Where can I give my talents to? He kept it simple. He didn't try to center focus, okay? And that, that's our thing at home. It's like we're very, you know, and Father Jack says this all the time, and if you've, heard, if you've heard him once, you've probably heard this before, our goal is to get to heaven and bring as many people with us as possible. Simplicity, okay? The other one is I got to fight pride every day. And that's my big one. Um, I'm sure it is for y'all as well, or for some of you at least. Uh, my advice is just give it up to God. I'm, again, take it from me. I'm the king of the planners. My sister, Michelle, is here. And you can ask her, and I'm gonna, she's going to help me out here. When we go visit her in Florida, I, we would get there, and about two minutes in, I would turn to her and I'd say, What's the plan? Every single time. I don't say that anymore. Okay? Give up on the planning. Focus on God. Okay? Give up the pride. And I want to say thank you to Joe Alfonso. I don't think he's here today, but he um, taught me about the, the, or when we did a talk at a blaze and I interviewed him, he talked about the litany of humility. That prayer changed my life. The litany of humility, look it up. It's an awesome prayer. I'd like to go deeper into it, but I only have 20 seconds, so I gotta keep going. Um, surround yourself with strong friends, okay? Two, two stories real quick. Number one, uh, it was April of 2014, right before I decided I wanted to get you know, 
get out of my job and, and get into the faith, but I was still in that fog. I had a friend, Matt Armentano in, in Kentucky, and he told me, he came to me and asked me, he's like, why aren't you Catholic? I was like, oh, you know, I was, you know, I'll, one day I will be. He's like, no, no, dude, why aren't you Catholic? I said, well, I, you know, I do. He's like, you're teaching your kids to be Catholic. You're doing everything Catholic. You're married to a Catholic woman. Everything in your house is Catholic. Why are you not Catholic? I said, I don't know. Stop it. But I had a friend that had the nerve and had, you know, we had the rapport that he could do that to me. He could say, why? Surround yourself with those friends. Don't get yes friends. Surround yourself with those friends. And the last one, uh, I was contemplating a move to Houston at one point after I left the station for a pretty decent paying job in Houston. I really didn't want to go. But I had a friend, Robert, right over here, who pulled me aside and basically said, I would rather make half the amount of money you're going to make and be surrounded by my friends and be at this church and be in this community than go and make twice as much and be, al be alone. He's like, it's your call, but it's the truth. And again, I was surrounding myself with friends that had the nerve to turn to me and say that. So it looks like I'm almost out of time. The last one I want to say is read the Gospels. It's the story of Jesus and his ministries. And we get bits and pieces here, but when you read the whole thing from front to back and kind of how he walked, it's, it's so powerful. It really is amazing. That's really ch you know, changed me as well. So we as Catholics, you know, people, people want authentic in this world. You know, they want something that's real, something that's tangible, something that's authentic. We have the answers for the world here. The answers for a weary world are here in this church. We have to live our faith. We have to, you know, God has given us so many gifts. And it's our job to be that light, to shine that light for God, to shine that light for Christ, you know, in the world. Okay. Um, I'm very blessed to have all the friends that I have here and the family that I have here. And we're blessed to have Father Jack. And I can't even believe that I'm up here talking about my Catholicism. But it has been an honor to be here. Thank you so much for having me this morning. Y'all have a good day. Love, you, Love this guy, huh? Thank you, Steve. Thank you so much. That's great. So what we do now is uh, we do what's called table talk. So um, at your tables, we're going to reflect on some questions. Um, and we put those questions up in the center there. Um, one of the, the first question is, first question is, what is one thing in your day-to-day -day life that is holding you from going deeper in your faith? What is one thing in your day-to-day -day life that is holding you off, holding you from going deeper with your faith? We'll take about five, six minutes for that question. The next question at your table for table talk, what are, what are some ways that you can simplify your life and minimize distractions? What are some ways you can simplify your life and minimize distractions? We'll take a couple minutes for that. Rich your marriage, okay? So what we'll do now is, um, and I want to bring um, Father Jack up here to give our send-off, and we will get, get kick that off. Thanks, All Father right. Jack. Great. Awesome. Um, wow, what a great presentation by Steve today, huh? That's awesome. Let's give him another round of applause. Great. Awesome. He's stepping up. And I don't, I don't know if you said it earlier, but when uh, Aaron and him were on there engaged encounter. I was the terrifying priest at that. 
And when Steve heard I was coming to this parish, he's like, oh, no, that's that priest. I, I don't know. It's going to be really scary. So it's been a long ride. It's been good. It's been really awesome. So um, just to reiterate this week as we go through, what we're going to do next time is what are we focusing on? We're focusing on desire and the heart being on fire with love, that we're, we want to be restless until we rest in the Lord, right? We want to be restless in that love. We want to have that attitude that pushes us forward on fire, blazing with desire for God and desire for love of neighbor, that we're not settling for half-baked relationships with God or neighbor. We're, we're, we're moving in, intentionally seeking relationship, intentionally seeking God, and not putting up with anything less than the image of God in that person and seeking that God who is in heaven. And so what I want us to do is, is again, to, to focus on devotion. What is this loving heart? It's a devoted heart. What does the devoted heart do? It responds quickly to what God reveals we should do. A devoted heart is immediate and quick to response. When you're deeply in love with somebody, when they make a request, you respond to it. And that's what devotion is. So we want to look at devoted hearts. And we're going to start in this month of October with Mary, of course, the Immaculate Heart. And we'll look at her um, and we'll, we'll say, okay, she is the perfect human response to God. She is. And if we have a devotion to our mother who shows us how to come to God in a proper way, that devotion is the best way to get to Christ, to the Father, and the Holy Spirit. So we're going to look at that first. It's very appropriate. This year we're going to focus on devotion. Mary, Joseph, uh, and Jesus, the Holy Family. And then we'll look at the Father and the Holy Spirit. How do we focus on these persons, whether they be human or whether they be divine, to draw us into the fire of God's love? So that's what we're going to be looking at. So how do we do that? Make sure when we wake up, we start the fire. So in the morning, we pray that prayer of Therese of the child Jesus, who we celebrated yesterday. Man, I got some awesome quotes out of the Magnificat where she's talking about Jesus as both a, a sword, but also as fire. And she burns with this desire to be in the battle. She says to be in the battle like Joan of Arc to fight for love in the name of God, for she wanted to be the heart of Jesus as a member of the body of Christ. And so we're going to look at that. Make sure you pray again. Mental prayer this week, again, what are we doing? When we turn to God, when we seek Him, He desires us first. And then when we turn to Him, He stokes that desire within us to desire Him back. He's already desiring us. He wants us to pay attention to Him. Next a slide, please. And then Again, this examination of conscience. Why this examination? Because if you're constantly seeking to know God's present, he's going to stoke your heart's desire. If you forget about God, you forget about those you don't love. If you remember God, it's a sign of your devotion and love. You have to cultivate that sense. He desires that you desire him. He's desiring you already. But you have to turn again and again to him throughout the day. Otherwise, you're turning to what we call creatures and to the world. And what's going to happen is you'll be drawn into that world and you'll never be satisfied. You'll be eaten up by the world rather than consumed with love of God. And so you have to be so careful. The world, the flesh, and the devil are drawing you away from that fiery love into the fire of alienation and despair. So cultivate. Uh, last slide, please. Again, this mission. Go carefully through this examination of conscience at the end of the day because it's really finding out whether you were uh, turning to God over and over again or whether you failed to do so. Very simple. Okay, so we want simplicity. Speaking of simplicity, um, we want to turn to Mary whose holiness ordered her whole life. Why don't we, before we go, all stand, and we'll pray to our mother as we are in this month of Mary, this month of Our Lady of the Rosary, this month of Our Lady of Victory, this month when we remember her. And let us pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Together we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. All right. Thanks, everybody. Don't forget, uh, at the exits, you've got... Uh...